Okay, so hello, Harry. Right, it's great to have you back. It's been hello, it's, it's been a while you, since I've seen you, you in the giant courtroom. Killer. Last time <laughs> well, I saw you, you looked uh, a little different. But uh, I'm, I don't mean to hijack your show right away, but I just got to say, you know, your level of preparation shown through because as a, as a, you know, former trial lawyer, you can take somebody to the point where they, you know, know everything, but then there's that extra bit where they actually have it down to show that they're listening and as if they're answering in the moment even though they've said it already 200 times. And that's what you did. You really gave the impression you were listening, responding, honestly, you know. And more it's a importantly, shame it wasn't televised. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. And it's more a shame importantly, it wasn't televised respectfully. You, you could see right away that, you know, you were credible. And I, I, I tried to translate this in the afternoons on television, but you kind of had to be there. That's what a jury's for. Anyway, hijacking over. Hello, Mr. Host again. Welcome back. <laughs> well, and thank thanks you. for having me. Well, good. Look, we, first of all, what I was saying to you is most importantly, it was done respectfully. And that was the That's difference. Right. But nevertheless, we you jump. never, ever lost your shit. Nope. The, the moment they call it such a big thing, you were just very properly kind of flummoxed, polite, respectful. You never, ever, ever, ever let them get your goat. Not easy. All right. So instead of just jumping okay. right into it, because we have a lot to talk about, <laughs> let me ask okay. you this. Speaking about another trial that just took place, what's your take on the Hunter Biden verdict? Because I know that you said that he should not have been prosecuted in the first place. What's your take on yeah. that? Yeah. Look, I think the verdict is sound. Now that sounds like a contradiction. I was on Steph Rule last night. I said, huh? It was a sound verdict, but he shouldn't have been prosecuted. But that's exactly right. The DOJ has vast prosecutorial discretion. They exercise it, and it's very important that they should exercise it in a across the board equal way, treating like people alike. And it's completely clear that someone who signs a form falsely and does nothing else, doesn't use the gun to commit a crime, or you know, isn't a known member of a gang, does not get prosecuted. And moreover here, they treated him, it was, they worked out a diversion agreement, which is absolutely consistent with how they normally handle things. That unraveled in court through no fault of his, and then boom, they came at him with everything. And, you know, in, a, in the normal Department of Justice, that doesn't happen because you have a supervisory structure that exists, among other things, to make sure you that DOJ policy and consistency is applied. But because this guy, David Weiss, is operating as a lone wolf and Merrick Garland is hands off, he could do this thing. So it's a crime that Hunter Biden committed. I don't have any quibble with the jury, but it's the kind of crime that is never prosecuted by the DOJ, isn't in federal court. And in that sense, he was it's a real injustice, even though I don't think the jury did anything wrong. Does that make sense? It does. But you know what it sounds a lot like? It sounds like what Trump Trump is yes, all does, the time Michael. that the DOJ never should have brought the case against him. I'll tell you what I'm getting a little well, bit. Well, but let me just about. stop you because this comes up again and again. It does sound like it, except in one case it's accurate and in the other case it's inaccurate. There's over a thousand cases just like Trump's that have been brought. There is, I think, zero cases like Hunter's that have been brought. So one is, one is uh, legit and one's illegit. That's all. I mean, let's also then, I'll talk about myself for a second. Okay. I have, you, you earned when it. I was, when I was charged with, yeah. we'll just start with the five, the first five counts on tax evasion. Now I yeah. never, and I said this to both Susan Hoffinger, who's the um, prosecutor, right. as well as Todd Blanche, who defense counsel, the, as I call him, the sloped, the stupidest lawyer of all time. Um, <laughs> What I said to him was, I never, not since the very beginning, I never disputed the underlying uh, facts, meaning that there was money that was not paid to the IRS. Yes. What I have always disputed 
in my PSR, all the way through my books, even to today. Even when I sat on the witness stand, I've always maintained the fact that I should not have been prosecuted, that I was not afforded the same thing that other taxpayers are afforded. And that's an opportunity to meet with an IRS agent to discuss it, to bring in my accountant, a lawyer, myself, and to talk to an agent about the discrepancy and then to work it out in a civil fashion. That's the way the system works. I was given 48 hours and if I didn't accept the plea that the Southern District of New York prosecutors, Nick Roos, Tom McKay, Andrea Griswold, Kazami, right? If I didn't accept the plea in that 48 hour period, they were filing an 80 page indictment that was to include my wife. And I elected to protect my family. And look, you know, I, this this happens, and it's I'm not um, suggesting every time that they that this happens, it's illegit. This is what feds do. But you were a pawn in their game. That's just a fact. And they, they were playing a bigger game that, and then you know, it got it got all caught up. And we can talk about Barr and Berman and Trump, et cetera. But uh, that you know, that's what happened uh, to you. They were. That you 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 were sort of an intermediate step, and then other shit happened. But but uh, but that's that's right. I don't you know I don't know enough about how that would have worked out. But but if they didn't do it as they should with other taxpayers, that is an injustice. Well, in fact, can I ask you a question? Well, in fact, before you ask me yeah. that, in fact, yeah. in my uh, sentencing memorandum, yeah. I created. Because I came up with the thought right. of it while I, this was going on. I came yeah. up with a box. And in that right. box, I listed like Swiss Beats, John Travolta, um, you know, uh, other actors, well-known people who owed like $10 million of money that was hidden overseas. I never hit a dollar. All my money was sitting in Capital One Bank. And I gave to my accountant, this guy Jeffrey Getzel, right, a real jerk off. Uh, I gave him every single bank statement in a three ring um notebook in a three ring uh you know loose uh yeah. what, what, like you used to have when you were in school um in an organized and tabulated fashion they never gave me a chance to resolve this and i've never in my life been audited i've never in my life uh been uh what do you call i've never filed a late tax return i've never until 2017 so that year for the tax year 2017 in 2018, I never even filed. I never even asked the IRS for an extension in my whole yeah. life. Plus, I had paid like four million dollars in taxes over those years. So who pays four and doesn't pay one three? It was an right. error, right? Yeah. Well, and here's the thing. Um, you know, this this um, uh, like this happens with Hunter Biden too. Everything you're talking about goes to prosecutorial discretion and what's the just and reasonable exercise of government power. Once it happens, once they've made that decision, and I think Abby Lowell, a very intelligent, aggressive lawyer, you know, blundered because the, the, that, that point that like they treated you different, there's just no room absent fantastic proof of being, you know, really, uh, uh, the subject of some kind of prejudice or discrimination, you can't bring that before a judge, no much less a jury. So at that point, you know, with Abby Lowell anyway, it, it, it that that dog was not gonna hunt at that point in the proceedings, and that's that's what makes it a real. There's many um, defendants for some legit, some not, who, you know, believe they've been singled out. But prosecutors do single out. It's just they need to do it in the same way for the same kinds of people. And, you know, it, 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 it I'm sure, can be super frustrating to be on that side. Um, sure I have a different sure. question for you, but you keep going until, you, until it's open, until you tell me I can ask I it. wanted to ask you, though, because Hunter's yeah. case... This yeah. case was presided over by a Trump appointed judge, Mary yeah. Ellen uh, Nurikayo, right? Or That's Nurikayo, right. whatever, however she pronounces right. her name. Mm -hmm. And she uncovered holes in his earlier plea agreement. Is that the main reason that Hunter stood trial? Yes and no. First of all, as best I can tell, she's a good judge. 
she ran a good trial mm -hmm. and the, I agree and with the that. She got, yeah and she uncovered a hole uh but it was a it was a fair hole what happened was the wait, plea wait, wait. agreement she covered she covered an a hole who is the a hole <laughs> sorry about <laughs> that yeah exactly oh that yeah uh -huh. never mind now well, can i rewind that yes she uncovered a particular problem and it was a problem and it's interesting well we don't know the full details but they, he was going to be treated with diversion. In other words, keeps his nose clean for two years and is never charged, which is consistent with how DOJ handles these offenses. Um, that was the deal. But there was a provision in there that would basically have her be the final arbiter of whether he would kept his nose clean. Supposedly, they wanted, the Biden folks wanted in there out of insurance in case Trump were to win and he would, like, renege on the agreement but that was in there and she properly said well wait a second i th this is a prosecutorial decision i can't be the trigger for whether for what you do that's an executive function at th and at that point it unraveled in court now at that time i've had things i'm sure you have to unravel in court and what normally should happen is Sorry, Your Honor, we'll go away for half an hour. You go to a side room, you work it out, everything's okay. But if you read the transcript, things got kind of crazy and macho and, and, and degenerated fast. And both sides were, well, mm -hmm. then there's no deal. And then they squared off. Not a smart thing to but do wasn't, with the But government. wasn't that also, and then didn't once, Harry, Harry, didn't it also have to do with uh, his tax issue in California that he wanted it to be a global settlement? And because there's reporting. Yeah, well, 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 yeah. so the, absolutely the plea agreement was the two misdemeanor counts on taxes, at which he's now going to have the book thrown at him and he's going to, mm -hmm. he's, he's been indicted in LA and there'll be felonies. And this little diversion thing on the gun, this pissant thing on the gun that he had for 10, I don't mean, you know, it's, he was, he was a drug addict with a gun. That's not good, but it's not a, it's not, it's not something they don't normally prosecute. Everything was fine with the tax stuff. It was just this little wrinkle. But then they they got they got kind of combative about it. And shortly thereafter, Weiss gets called to the carpet for a sweetheart deal, et cetera. And they couldn't put the pieces back together again. Lowell goes after it very aggressively. You're reneging on your plea agreement. That's a hard yeah, that's a, case that's to a make. Bad and at that point they were they were at loggerheads and that and that's what happened to hunter hunter biden if they'd written it without that little provision it would have been fine and of course the screaming question in the case for weiss is all right this is what you thought was fair a year ago this treatment now i understand there was a little macho um back and forth in in court but you're the prosecutor exercising the power of the united states what has changed for you about Hunter Biden that you now think the fair treatment of the gun thing is three felony counts and the treatment of the tax thing is uh, throw the book at him. Why exactly? If he were in the Department of Justice supervisory structure, he would have to answer those questions internally to supervisors. But he's a free agent because he's a special counsel and Garland is keeping arm's length. So there could be good answers to that question, but I haven't heard them and he hasn't provided them and he doesn't have to. Once you go to court, all he has to show is the charges I'm making, I can prove. But what the hell, what happened from a year ago that caused you now to throw the book at him? That's mm -hmm. the screaming question. Sure, that is the screaming question, but I will go one yeah. step further because I've been sort of bouncing around from conservative to progressive uh, news yeah. stations. And the interesting thing that I heard is that Trump Republicans, and I'm talking about members of the of Congress, were yeah. actually hoping that Hunter Biden would be found not guilty so That's that right. they can talk about how the judiciary, the Department of Justice, is rigged. So my question to you then is, now that Hunter Biden was found guilty, you think that these MAGA morons will finally acknowledge the fact that the court system is not rigged? Yeah. No, but they'll do it implicitly by shutting up, as you say. I mean, look, the conviction in the trial you testified was the New York State Court, and somehow they've twisted it to be actually all in cahoots with 
the Department of Justice, Merrick Garland, and President Biden. It is complete lunacy from the start. And you're right. And what, so what we're hearing now from them is it's a sideshow or they're just being quiet. And for them to be quiet is a deafening uh, admission that uh, never mind. Uh, now, you know, that doesn't mean they'll stop uh, on their refrain of, about the New York um, conviction, but it is awfully awkward. The, the president of the United States' son prosecuted by the president of the United States DOJ in pretty controversial and unfortunate fashion. And, you know, that that's happening. How, how are you going to square that with a New York court having convicted Donald Trump on solid evidence, you know, so. Yeah, you, I guess you don't. So my last question is yeah. part of this sort of, um, mo you know, this whole theme. You think Hunter is likely to do time behind bars? And if so, how much? Because I'm seeing some crazy ass guidelines. And what bothers me is he's charged on three counts. Trump is responsible on 34 counts. However, it's already been, I guess, decided that Trump's counts will all run consecutive, not concurrent. Uh, thereby, the most that he would ever be accountable uh, behind you mean bars. Concurrent, Trump, not concurrent, not consecutive. Yeah. Uh, right, backwards. Um, yeah. It would be four yeah. years, as opposed to what would be like 136 years in terms of guidelines. Yeah. Okay, so that kind of decision, whether things are concurrent or consecutive, is an animal of state law. With Hunter Biden, the guidelines, and to, besides everything I said, how he, uh, how this is not what the DOJ normally prosecutes, and how he switched for reasons we don't know and don't seem legit. This taking a step back, this is just not a case for. It's really a case for the the. Uh, you know, drug treatment, not the criminal justice system. So in the throes of crack cocaine addiction, he does a lie on a form. You know, this is a guy who was really lost after his brother had died in a terrible tragedy. He has chinned himself back up. It's not, it really shouldn't be a, a crime. It, it's bad, but it shouldn't be, it should be treated as a, as a drug uh, addiction problem. But all that said, um, his guidelines equate for this this one signature that equates to three. You know, you always, you always in federal system get several uh, charges out of a single event. Get 15 to 21 months. That to me seems very long for what um, he's really convicted of. And I think it will to the judge as well. So my best guess is because the guidelines now, remember, you know this, they used to be pretty um, uh you know, really constraining on judges and now they're not. So my best guess he'll says he'll just get a few months. But he's got the fucking tax counts as as we were just talking about. Those are big time felonies. And David Weiss, you know, he I mean he's just being kind of vicious, but his his uh statement after the conviction is this yeah. investigation isn't closed yet. So he's rattling sabers as if some, you know, the Burisma stuff and, you know, and all of that could still come home. So I don't think he's going to be done until Hunter is potentially seeing real time. I think this offense, however, when when he's actually sentenced will be, uh, you know, a couple months. Yeah, because they are, still, four, they are five, now talking kind of about fairer violations. The federal, um, you, you know, the uh, Agent Registration yeah. Act. Well, um, the book you know, yeah, they, that, that's a, and that's a heavy sentence too. A violation. One hundred percent. Look, I was a prosecutor. I defended the DOJ, and I am. I was for throwing the book at really bad actors like Al Capone. You know all these things, and you want to incapacitate them and find things. That's. That I think is tough stuff, but legit. But man, and by the way, let me set to the side anything like threatening to indict your wife. That is really pretty nasty. But but you know what is really nasty is throwing the book at someone who you know Hunter Biden does it. Yeah, I think he probably maybe exploited the name a little, and he definitely I I know him some when he because I knew his brother who died. 
And I've, you know, had drinks with him and stuff. And, you know, the guy just descended into the abyss and I'm sure did things that, you know, need to, I'm not sure, but might have done things that need, uh, you know, some, um, uh, you know, recompense. But but treating him like a uh, you know one of the ten most wanted, it's it's really ugly. Listen, I really feel bad for him because I know I was treated like yeah. not one of the ten most wanted, one of the one of the one yeah. most wanted. I mean, they treated well, me with with yeah. the the it, it's I don't even know how to describe. You know, I came across that federal uh, location monitoring agreement when I was released. Uh, due to COVID mm-hmm. for the ankle bracelet, went to 500 Pearl Street, met up with this guy, Adam Pakula and Enid Phoebus. Yeah. Instead of going to Geo, which is the company, the outside company that does everything. So I found the document. And interestingly enough, here's the document. This is the actual federal location monitoring agreement that everybody signs. And then you'll notice that it has an identifiable number attached to it. As you know, all federal documents do. And it's a two-page document. Um, Then I found the one that they gave to me to sign. And you'll notice that there is no, uh, you know, there is no identifiable number attached to it, right? It just says federal location monitor. Not to mention the real one has 19. So what is Lumen? Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. It's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. And on the app, it lets you know if you're burning fat or you're burning carbs. And it gives you a tailored guidance to improve your nutrition, your workouts, your sleep, something I need badly, and even stress management. So let me tell you how Lumen works. All you have to do is you breathe into your Lumen first thing in the morning, and you'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning mostly fat or carbs. And then Lumen gives you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on the measurements. You can also breathe into it before and after your workouts and your meals so that you know exactly what's going on in your body in real time. And Lumen will give you tips, tips to keep you on top of your health game. So here's what Lumen does. Lumen provides crucial insights and helpful guidance for your lifestyle. It requires effort though, and it also requires a lifestyle change to achieve results. Let me be clear, Lumen is not just a weight loss tool. It's about understanding and improving your metabolic health. So let me also tell you why metabolic health matters. It matters because your metabolism is your body's engine. It's how your body turns the food that you eat into fuel that keeps you going. Because your metabolism is at the center of everything your body does, optimum metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits, including easier weight management, improved energy levels, better fitness results, and better sleep. Lumen gives you recommendations to improve your metabolic health. It can also track your cycle as well as the onset of menopause and adjust your recommendations to keep your metabolism healthy through hormonal shifts so that you can keep up your energy and stave off cravings. So if you want to take the next step to improving your health, Go right now to lumen.me slash Cohen to get 15% off your Lumen. That's L-U-M-E-N dot M-E slash Cohen for 15% off your purchase. And thank you, Lumen, for sponsoring this episode. Paragraphs, the one that I was asked to sign, has eight. And there's spelling mistakes, there's pronoun mistakes. They call me instead of a him, a her. I mean, it's it's all over the place. But again, this document does not exist in the federal system. It was made specifically for me. And when I was when I refused to sign it because of its violation of the First Amendment uh, in paragraph number one. They then claimed that I refused to sign the document. Well, how could you be remanded off of a counterfeit document that doesn't exist? I mean, to me, it's like if I say, Harry, uh, you killed somebody yesterday. I want you to sign this acknowledgement. You say I'm not because 
I wasn't even I wasn't even in that state. I was in California at the time. You're like, well, either sign it uh, or or we're gonna, you know, we're gonna um, arrest you anyway. You know, that's not normal, but it is exactly what Donald Trump keeps talking about on day number one. You know, you, one. Sound, you sound still pretty upset about that. Are you planning some, you know, further legal action? So you, you know that, try to yes, no, no, no. Behind so you? I, no, no, so I brought the lawsuit against Trump, yeah. the DOJ, Bill Barr, and a whole slew of people. It was, it was um, dismissed by Judge Lyman with a decision that interestingly enough is actually in accord with the lawsuit. He's just saying because of the overturning of the Dobbs decision, the Bivens case, which is what this thing is predicated on, no longer applies. So I'm not able to sue based upon Bivens. Well, the only other way is you got to go to Congress, and Congress yeah. has. And to by the way, Lewis Lyman, a very fine, honest uh, judge. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I have no, I have no issues him. with yeah. with Lewis Lyman at yeah. all. Uh, yeah. You know, in fact, his decision is very apologetic and pro Michael. Yeah. You know, as was Alvin Hellestein, who was the judge that had me yeah. removed from the home confinement. We then went to a three um, judge. Uh, appellate court second circuit and they affirmed judge lyman now we're going to the supreme court we're actually filing uh, a writ of certiorari the day before trump's sentencing on july 10th we're going to go there uh and we're going to we're going to ask for example judge thomas what did you mean when you say that bivens applies if it is of the most unusual circumstance yeah what You're could caught be more up in unusual? this whole crazy stuff with Bivens now. It's, right. That's so just, what could that's be more rough. unusual yeah. than the President of the United States weaponizing <laughs> the Justice Department through a willing and complicit Attorney General to incarcerate a political critic and enemy? That's right out of Putin's playbook. And so yeah. we'll see what happens. By the way, Harry, what was your question? that you wanted to ask. I have a two-part question for you. Well, there, I have two questions for you, but there's so much, I, I, I just want to frame them and I hope you'll get to both of them. So it's a shorter question you've been asked before, uh, but just honestly, it, to the extent you can recall it and you were in your body, what did it feel like there looking at him and 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 uh, testifying against Trump, encountering him eye to eye? That's one question. Separate question, you can illuminate for us, even though they did it by video for him, uh, what's, what's it like now for him having to deal with a New York probation officer and what sorts of you know, kind of impingements on his liberty or indignity or whatever sort of await him now that he's a convict and will soon be a probationer. So going to the first question, which is uh, what was it like testifying 25 hours on the stand? It was brutal. It was grueling, it brutal. Yeah. you know, yeah, because Blanche, the sloat, um, is a meanderer when it comes to questioning. He went from 26, look, you were in the courtroom. Right, which was, by the way, my next I series believe of- I was the first person to say meander and it became the mantra for the entire yeah. TV Well, that's what he is. That He's is a meander. Yeah. He is a meandering, yeah. um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, questioner. 2015, yeah. 2017, 2018, 2020, 2019, 2016. He's bouncing all over. So you have to immediately be able to recall what he's even talking yeah. about. Because look, yeah. remember, I testified seven times before Congress. Right. I testified to the Mueller team. I testified. I was, you know, what, the day of the raid when I spoke with Trump. Blah blah blah. It was very very difficult. But here's the funny thing: when it came to Trump, only once during that 25 hours. Did we actually lock eyes for a split second? The rest of the time, he had yeah. his eyes closed. He was yeah. slumped back. He was either sleeping or just sitting there, almost like a petulant child when you're playing peekaboo. Just because you have your hands in front of your face, right, doesn't mean that you're not there. Right. And that's right. sort of what he was doing. He was kind of playing peekaboo with the court. First of all, I found it insanely disrespectful, not even just to Judge Mershon, you know, to the He's, jury, but to the jury. If you are going to do anything to fuck up your chances of having 
anybody, uh, you know, side with you on anything, how about keep your eyes open and pretend like you actually give a shit what anybody's gonna say. And by the way, forget about it. I, I had binoculars. He was at least many times, he was either, oh, yeah. I saw REM or else like, yeah. That the guy was 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 asleep for part of the yeah. time. Yeah. I wondered if maybe. Well, never mind. Okay, so that's part of it. Go ahead. So the second part about the PSR, I do want to say that yeah. I take, and I want to say this to my listeners, that I take offense to the manner. I understand it, but I take offense some of the things that were done. For example, okay, I don't want the cost to New York, New York City in terms of moving him around with the police and shutting down the court and that, 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 I understand that I am not the same as Donald. In fact, nobody else really is other than another former president. Where I have the problem, why not just send the probation officer to Mar-a-Lago to do it there? For example, yeah. one of the things that I was re required to do and all, all indicted uh, or all, um, uh, inmates, felons, uh, are required to convicts, do it. Felons, uh, convicts, felons, exactly. Right? You yeah. are required to take a urine, a urine test for right. drugs in your system and so on. All right? Uh, you got to piss in a cup in front of the probation officer. Um, and he should have been required to do that too. Because it is part of the process yeah. whether or not that the guy has a drug addiction. Maybe he is on Adderall. Maybe he's on some sort of a drug that's making him sleep. I don't know. Maybe he's on whatever. So yeah, well, I'm, that, yeah, PSR, I mean, so I no. uh -huh. that PSR is not complete. But then again, when I heard that he finished it in about 20, 25 minutes, mine was several hours. I don't yeah. understand how they even got past the very first step of the finances in less than right. 25 hours. So I think it was How a about sham. association with known criminals? Right. He's got three or four, right? What do you mean? He's got 20 of them. Myself yeah, well, included, right. Alan Weisselberg. You have Rudy Giuliani. You have uh, Eastman, Clark. You have uh, so, yeah. you know, Christina Hobb. I mean, you have, there's, there's a ton of them. Right, yeah, exactly. To name just a few, right? So right. let me do this. And I, I want to switch gears and stay kind okay, of on this, yeah. this Trump yeah. trial. Because again, you were there. Did anything stand out to you? What was your favorite moment? Um, and because I know it's old news already, but I value the fact that you were there. What was your favorite moment in the courtroom when I was on the stand? When you were on the stand. So let's, uh, um, so to me, the I mean the the signal feature as I look at it was the absence of any even the thing they tried to make such a big deal about with the was it the May the one minute 14th. thirty nine the one minute yeah, thirty nine so, um, by the way a very great moment you weren't oh you didn't get to see the closing you, you heard about this though right I did that 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 Steinglass timed it and yeah did a simulated so to me the great bar was the absence of um you know any kind of of big thing that he could try to exploit but there were several here was one that was that you didn't even know pecker had testified to something about something you had said and they asked you uh about what what pecker had said and you said i don't recall and to me, you know, I, that that was something I tweeted out and shown through because it made clear you weren't going to school on Pecker's testimony. You were out of the courtroom, for, and and so it made clear there was no coordination. So mm -hmm. that was a moment of genuineness. Um, and then just in general, my, I've said this before. I've put on a lot of witnesses, and you're pretty happy if they just like respond and don't get too far. You had the additional testimonial quality, uh, and you just, you can't, it's funny because one has to prepare to look natural, but of listening, taking it in, and and responding. So it was actually, uh, you know, being in the moment, even though you'd, you'd prepared 25 uh, times. So it's that overall impression, and of course, that's what the jury takes, not not this. You know, they tried to say, 
as to as to that one thing which you handled perfectly. You were flummoxed, not you know, perjure. I mean, you you weren't there but, either. But I didn't. But, but was, here's the thing, though. I they never played. Really, I just tried to. Yeah. I just let me finish because it's your question. Um, that um, you know, you so it was less the signal and more the overall point that they you know, and you and I talked a little bit about this like a year ago. Just don't let them get your goat, and you know. You didn't, and it wasn't easy, and you were under a, a very, very, very uh, high, high focus microscope. So you know that that's you. You just you handled yourself without being defensive. Not easy, and you and especially because you feel screwed in many ways. So, right. so with that minute thirty nine, I never wavered. Right when Blanche was trying to keep hammering minute thirty nine. Yeah. Well, you're lying, aren't you? No, sir. Yeah. And then you and then sure. and I, he said and no. then he said to me, "So you believe that you spoke to Mr. Trump at the?" I know I did. Yeah. I know I did, sir. And that was like the that was the one where then all these fucking assholes, especially members of Congress, went running outside that he just perjured himself because he claimed that he absolutely recalls, you know, doing it and he clearly couldn't because it's only a minute and 39. Then we had the luxury, thanks to Barron's graduation and Trump deciding that he wanted to go, you know, he wanted to meet his child for the first time. All of a sudden, right, um, we had the time to find the tape on it and shows that five minutes right that it, up, yeah. earlier is when they got off the stage and sure I oh you guys it. got the da found the tape not see not cnn no it was the CNN da got I a think, hold of it i think it, yeah, yeah i think the da is the one that yeah. actually found yeah. it uh yeah. and you know, i give them a lot of credit but the slow yeah, todd right. blanche right the stupidest lawyer of all time he made i think five mistakes in the questioning of me. One, when he started talking about Gene Friedman, the tax was the, known as the taxi king, uh, was my yeah. partner. No, sir. What do you mean yeah. he wasn't your partner? And he gets angry, yeah. well, well, you know? Because right. he must have had 10 pages there. Because Gene Friedman was a bad dude, right? What do you mean he wasn't your, well, sir? He was never my partner. Would you like me to explain? And that's where I knew he screwed up. He goes, I absolutely would. And so I lean over, and I start to it talk was the to the second jury. defense trial, right? Yeah. Now, now I turn around and I start talking to the jury. He was never my partner. He leased my medallions. No different than if you lease an apartment from a building that has a thousand yeah. apartments in it. That doesn't make just because you're leasing an apartment doesn't mean that you're an owner or that you're partners with the owner of the property. He was leasing for a some certain pursuant to a contract. No different than a lease agreement. So, and he was Michael, like, when right, did you, fine, how fine. did you decide when to look at the jury? When? How did you decide? You know, because you sometimes you did other, and other times you looked at the. At the it just had to feel right. It just had to feel so you, right. So you actually had you were in the moment enough to have a sort of human interaction feel. Because did you get things, any? Because they were to me a notably poker faced jury. They not to me. The, did you? Did you get, yeah, tell, tell me you don't have to name number seven so, and number so three. There were, so tell there were me, times, did you get any feedback or feel yeah. from them? So there were times in the conversation that I can see through my periphery that they were sitting up in their seats more so yeah. than, and you know, you could see that they were interested yeah. in that specific question. And once Todd Blanche yeah. opened up the door for me to explain it like, what happened with the taxes, right? I can see them all sitting there, and then afterwards, I can see them shaking and nodding their head. Yeah, really? yeah, you could, you yeah. Thought it, huh? And and I can. That's and the kind I, of thing that lawyers are exquisitely sensitive to in a courtroom. And I was trying to see from where I was, and you know, nobody appreciates it at all. Okay, so you felt they were with you? Oh yes, basically. yes, I knew, I I knew. Uh, exactly which ones were more in tune with me than the others but you know then what i did is we could talk about i don't think it'd be illegal to talk about that now would it no uh, i don't know i don't, know. I don't want to get merch on right. mad at you you know but uh, my, yeah. my point is i wanted them to hear the truth and i wanted them to hear it in my voice and the way that I explain it, not the way that Todd Blanche wanted to characterize it or that the media had previously characterized it. Yeah. You know, 
he he made mistakes he opened up the door allowing me to connect with the jury on topics that i knew that they wanted to hear about and so i did yeah. and clearly you know as the narrator of the story don't forget they heard from 19 other witnesses before me so they heard the story now yeah. they're going to hear it with my ability as right. a narrator to tell the whole the end final story. and and how did you feel about this Mike? because this isn't news to you right the the prosecution basically trashed you through various witnesses to lower expectations and to pull the sting out so they they were you know they told the jury about different uh you know bad uh, deeds etc do you think did, did you feel miffed about that or that they overplayed it they, i'm no. not telling you anything you don't no, know right no no you're not uh and i didn't feel miffed about it uh, look the reason why is what i did i did and i took ownership of in fact yeah that that acceptance of responsibility you know in part sent me to prison right like the campaign finance violations those two uh and right. the lying to congress interestingly enough as i stated there was a joint defense agreement on that statement that i ended up pleading elevate every morning with tommy john's second skin underwear because what you put in your pants can make or break your day and the luxurious support of second skin guarantees that everything will go smoothly and we need smooth so when you wear Tommy John, you're much more comfortable. And when you're more comfortable, you can do everything better. Tommy John's stylish and soft second skin underwear has dozens of comfort innovations, like a supportive contour pouch and breathable, lightweight, moisture wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands. With over 20 million pairs sold and thousands of five-star reviews, Guys everywhere love their Tommy Johns. I mean, that's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics like this one who raves the most comfortable box of briefs ever. There's no downside. Buy one pair and you'll never want to wear any other underwear again. I mean, I've been trying different brands of trunks for the past few months while wearing a similar product for the past three years. Second skin is by far the most comfortable I've ever worn, hands down. I mean, that's my opinion, hands down. They are the most comfortable. And I know because they're soft and, and they hold you right where you need to be. So look, I am certainly, I'm certainly one who wears them. I am one who recommends them. Tommy John is the way that you want to go. Plus, here's another part. Plus, your most valuable assets are always covered with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or its free guarantee. So get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. Save 20% on second skin at TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. That's TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. See the site for details. Guilty to. Abby Law was involved in that document creation too. So yeah. was Ty Cobb, yeah. right? Who's consistently on CNN, the jerk off that he is. Jared, Ivanka, Alan Garten, Jay Seculo. I mean, there were a ton of people involved in the crafting of that document. And so, but I'm the only one, once again, that got stuck holding the bag. But putting that aside. I no, wanna... I, I, got, I have to have one more. You're the only one, period who had turned on him and told the full truth. And the DA, you know, had to play with the cards they were dealt. They couldn't even go by Weisselberg. But to me, like, the, you know, the, Ronna Graff hardly said anything. And then in particular, Westerhout, to me, uh -huh. was like, you know, completely shading her testimony to pander to him. Oh, you, oh, you weren't there for it, but I, but, um, I, so maybe you're not aware, but there I are don't others. Know, I don't know exactly what she said. Oh, uh, that'll be an interesting thing for you to read the the transcript. But you were the only guy. I mean, and and of course that in terms of the overall point we're talking about, you you had a story where you could say, "This shit happened. I'm going to protect my family, and from this point on, I am telling the truth, and you can't show otherwise." Whereas there were many. Pecker, you probably have heard. 
was almost a charming kind of rogue. He was just an open book. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. But then others, the one you could tell which were trying to be, including Hope Hicks, who broke down uh -huh. in tears, as you know, poor thing, eh, who were trying still not to harm him, because you that's you know that that's who the witnesses that that's they they the had cult. to put on were. Yeah, that's called the cult. Huh? So that's called being in the cult. Yeah. So let me ask you this yeah. then, because yeah. in a conversation with former Senator Al Franken, you were discussing yeah. Trump's sentence, and you said, and I quote, if he doesn't win, he has an appreciable chance of dying in prison. Perhaps. Yeah. But how much time do you think that Rashad will ultimately give him? Okay. And let me just say, that's gotten a huge play. To me, it's just math and the fact that those other cases aren't going away. I think Michonne will give him not very much time. And it, you know, a lot of often you'd get zero, but there's a lot of shit he's done that I think would factor in, and Mershon will stay the sentence. If I have to guess and you know put down uh, uh, bets, it would be something like uh, three months and five years probation stay the sentence so you can appeal. But all that time he's on probation, and then if he doesn't win, you know, can't, there's the, 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 the whatever's left of the 1-6 trial will go forward. The, the Mar-a-Lago case will eventually go forward. Uh, Fulton County, maybe the pieces will get put back again, but he's on probation for five, you know. And let me, this is a really, really big point. You know, I can imagine in a society ruled by a philosopher king, what would you do with a guy like Trump? You would do like you did with Nixon. You would say, just get the fuck away. Never no, bother us no. again. And you're going to be your own. But, but because we've been so adamant about, you know, rule of law like every other person, now he's charged with cases that are not going to go away. There's nobody to play the role of philosopher king. That Mar-a-Lago case, you know it, Michael, it's open and shut. It's not going away, Harry, however do you much remember, she it. Harry, do and you that, remember, by the way, years. Yeah. And he's 77. Sorry, Harry, do you remember when I turned around on television so many times and and I used to, I used to attack people on television saying, you keep saying that this is a weak case, it's not a real case, it's a stupid case, it's a ticky top case. And I turn around you and I said, it is an open- never said it. No, yeah. no, I'm not talking about you. Uh, that it's, an, yeah. it, it's, it's a documentary yeah. case. It's based on documentation and testimony. Yeah. I said, it is not. I said, first of all, why are we treating these four cases, the four yeah. indictments against Trump, like it's the Kentucky Derby? that we have to rank them, which one is the best, which one is the least, right. they're all right. illegal. And I say that Mershon, because I believe him to be very Solomonian. Um, I believe that- Yeah, that's that, a great word for yeah. him, he really so, is. I, he really is, and I had so much respect for him, not even speaking to him, just, just being there with him, that he was so yeah. precise and he was so, that he projects uh, strength of court, and I, that's why I stay. Totally. You, you know what he did with McDonald, right? That was a beautiful moment in the whole trial. That was no. maybe the best. Wow. I don't. You don't know this. No. Okay. McDonald comes out and he and, and he's his only witness and he and he sa starts muttering shit under his breath. He's you know. Oh he's, no no no! Jesus. You're not talking about McDonald. You're talking about you're Costello. I'm sorry, Costello. Yeah, my yeah, totally no, that, sorry. That, that I know. Forget yeah. that brain. Uh, what? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, you know that. But back, so back to Mershon. Yeah. Go ahead. So I was. So my point is, I believe that he's going to give him. Think about it this way, because again, I think incredibly highly of Mershon, and Me too. and the way that he conducts. And, he, and he's considered tough on white collar offenders sure. too. Yeah. So I could see him giving Trump, which is something that nobody offers anybody else, I certainly wasn't offered it, an option A and an option B. Option A is prison, right? Is your jail. And I think it would be a one year sentence or maybe a year and a day so that he can get the benefits of a year and a day, right? Um, so he doesn't have to be in Rikers, you mean? Or? Correct, uh-huh. So okay. a year a year and a day. And um, with that, uh, Obviously, I'm with you, a five-year um, supervised release post and so on, or option B. And he's committed you, a crime already, by the way. Correct. Since on probation. He's got possession of a gun as a felon. 
Go yep. ahead. Okay. Or yeah. option B. And what's option B? Well, you do a thousand hours, you stay out of jail, you do a thousand hours of community service in either yep. serving food to the homeless or picking up trash on the highway yep. or in a park. Something that benefits Preferably society. The Not something, some sympathy, and you get encounter poor, yeah, other people. Correct. Yep. Something like that. Plus, you're still going to get your supervised release post that. So the choice is yours. Now, while you're running, and obviously you can't be in the homeless shelter uh, or the uh, or the park picking up, you know, um, garbage while you're running for the president, uh, you know, for the presidency. But on those days that you do not have speeches or rallies and so on. You're not playing golf. You're not kicking back at mar lardo at the pool, wolfing down burgers. You're going to work in a soup kitchen or picking up garbage. Those would be the two options, really to put some humility in a man that was so fucking disrespectful to not just to the judge, not just to the, to the court system, not just to the witnesses, not just to the jury, but to America. You know what I mean? That's something I could see Mershon doing. I mean, that would be a very, very, very unusual, just the structure, pick A versus B. You could see B. I just wrote a piece about this uh, in The Atlantic about, you know, what could happen. And in a weird way, if he gives him probation straight up, it could be worse for Trump because I've talked to uh, practitioners all over New York. Basically, nobody ever stays a sentence of probation. Maybe he would. He doesn't want to cause a whole crazy political situation. But typically, if you get probation and there are conditions of it, including what you're talking about, it's not stayed. So the so it just goes up on appeal and you have to do it. So that if he could actually do something True. where he does require, though, though he doesn't want to mess with the campaign. I don't see A or, or, um, or B just because, you know, for one, even if it weren't anomalous, why would they do it? But um, you know, why give him the choice? But nevertheless, I could see either of those. And the headline will be, oh, he's given him a few months. But um, it's, it's really all the other stuff, including, uh, you know, uh, uh, subject to probation for five years that I think are, you know, are, mm -hmm. Trump hasn't quite realized how constrained he is. And he's now, you know, he's a convict. Yep. And con life for convicts is uh, can be really onerous. Yeah, you, you know it well. It. I do. Yeah. You know, the one thing that's been sort of um, running around my mind is you look to see what they just did to Hunter Biden, right? right. Um, and again, he broke the law um, and so on, though I think I'm in agreement with what you said. I, I, I yeah. can't believe that this is really where they're at on this yeah. document case, especially because Republicans don't even believe that you should have to fill out a form anyway in order right. to get a firearm. So it's right. kind of like ridiculous, but yeah. here's where- He's I'm got concerned. a constitutional argument to make on appeal, but it's only about the one count. I don't think it would change, uh, but Republicans- but, yeah. but here's my right. question for you. We now know that Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, is now being investigated or whether it's FARA violations or uh, the inappropriate or uh, the, the conduct, right? With, yeah. For the $2 billion, that $2 billion plus that he's received from the Middle East, specifically um, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Now he was corrupt before he got into the White House and never passed a background check. My question is, Re re uh, revised his SF-86 26 times or right. something, yeah. So my question is, why take so long? You see, had they brought this investigation two years ago, three years ago, or when he literally, it was six months yeah. max that he was out of the White House before he got that $2 billion. Why did they not investigate him then? Because now Republicans will say, all right, you're playing tit for tat? Wait till we take, or we have the house right now. Yeah. So we're gonna start going after Harry Lippman. We're gonna start going yeah. after, um, you know, the rest of the Biden family, Dr. Jill Biden, 
they're going to go after Kamala Harris. They'll go after everybody. Yeah. Why? Uh, Two part answer. It's not, we're not 100% sure they haven't, but uh, the main answer is I don't know. You know, there's a, like Jamie Gorelick was his lawyer way back when, and so that's a serious uh, thing. It, it was more the SF86 thing, but you know, it's not, a, I don't think he's gotten a full. But I just don't know. And I'll say this from having defended and gotten bloodied uh, on the on TV and stuff uh, about Merrick Garland. You, it's very hard to know from inside, from outside, what delays things. Sometimes it's bureaucratic lassitude. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, politicized in a small P way, commands from on high. But sometimes, especially where it involves foreign countries, there's all kinds of process and negotiations and hoops you have to jump through. I'm not saying it's happened here, but the answer is I just don't know. But I don't think anyone has just like, you know, put it at the bottom of their inbox and forgotten about it. Yeah. So let me ask you this then, because according to Justice Alito's own uh, animations, there are some decisions coming from the Supreme Court that people are really not going to like. Would you do me a favor, right? Can you speculate on what we yeah. can expect from the court, especially yeah. on the issues of immunity, women's reproductive rights, and so on? Yeah. You know, here we are midway through June. They only go to the end of June. Nearly half of their opinions have not issued. If you can believe that, it's partly because they do so few these days. It's an, I, you know, I think this court is really seriously out of out of step with American society. You know, I I clerk there. I love the court, and I know there are many times court's finest moments where they are counter majoritarian. But when you get so out of whack, and they have a, you know, their own sort of you know, um, obeisance to a dip to a whole philosophy. It's bad news and they've been bad news and they're going to be bad news. Couple points. Um, there are a few things here that they've taken, haven't issued yet that, uh, are reviews. I think of the fifth circuit where the fifth circuit was just so totally not on the, on the moon, but on Venus. And they're actually going to reverse them and there'll be some headlines that'll be like, oh, look at this moderate Supreme Court. Don't believe it for a friggin' second. That's just, you know, these couple things where they were really extreme. But the big things, so there's for starters, immunity, where the D.C. Circuit issued a very solid bipartisan opinion with, you know, people on both sides of the aisle. And they're going to take that and they're going to they're going to muck it up and give some time when a when a president gets immunity and it besides itself being an abridgment of the principle that nobody's above the law it's going to almost certainly create an additional delay that will mean that this most important not the the strongest is Mar-a-Lago but the most important case the 16 case will not go to trial between now and November and that sucks the, I think likewise, the obstruction case involving um, the Fisher, who was one of the marauders on January uh, 6th, will probably go for Fisher in a way that will ha could have real implications for Trump on, the, on his obstruction charges um, in Mar-a-Lago. Uh, yes, I think they will permit. Uh, there'll be uh, there'll be problems in voting rights, problems in abortion, where they'll let states go forward, and then and then guns. I actually think the gun the biggest gun case will be decided. This will be one of the things where they say, "Oh, you know, the uh, Supreme Court isn't totally off the reservation." Um, that they will, that the way this case goes down, it'll be in favor of the state regulation. But basically, we got a steamroll. You know, we got five or six that do what they want, uh, and you know, and even where where Roberts wants to temper it, he can't. And uh, this is going to be an ugly, ugly fortnight. Yeah. Well, let me just say this then, because you know, obviously, and I've been saying this pretty much my entire life. 
I don't understand why Supreme Court justices, I don't understand why federal court judges uh, have tenure for life. I, I don't understand it. I, I don't agree with it. I mean, it. you understand but it. I understand it. I don't, I don't agree. Well, it's not. It's really not. Idea. You, you know, it, it's... It, it, was, it really it's, is. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know, want to be a dick, but it know, really is in the Constitution. Y- yes, but... but yeah. To me, I, I just don't I don't understand it for meaning, mm-hmm. okay, you know, like yeah. you got Clarence Thomas, who took four million dollars in gifts from several different parties, mostly this guy, Harlan Crow. And yet there's absolutely no consequence and there can be no I mean, consequence to Clarence Thomas right. unless Clarence Thomas wants to give himself a consequence, which is the point I was trying to make that I don't understand how our founding fathers Clarence didn't Thomas. understand this. 43 years old when it gets they said they made me miserable for 43 years I'm going to make them miserable for 43 years and we've done about 33 of it that's right there's impeachment now there are reasons but I think you're saying on balance you disagree with the reasons you also have judges who get really old and doddering on the other hand you know life tenure insulation from politics but then what happens if the politics are within the court, but All right, it is right. let's, it, let's it, be, right. it would let's take be a really constitutional clear. amendment. Right, yeah. but let's be let's be clear about something. You know, in the olden days, right, yeah. they didn't think that there would be a Supreme Court judge that wouldn't accept the job for the honor of what it was. Now, when you have someone like Harlan Crow, yeah. who's worth billions of dollars and showering four five hundred thousand dollar week, you know, um, uh, trips on private planes and yachts and on on cool islands and so on. Yeah, so Clarence turns around and says, fuck it, right? Might as well fuck it. Well, look, let, let me let me move on because we all, I have two more Well, yeah, okay, but just quickly, he said, he let the word out that he was maybe gonna quit and that's when conservatives really got going and gave him money. And I just wanna say, I think Alito's thing is much worse. But anyway, move By on. By the way, so do I. Um, look, yeah. we, all, we all live in our own bubbles, right? But you're a reporter, you're a professor, okay. you're a um, you know, columnist. What's your opinion on how voters are digesting all of this information about the decline of democracy in the United States? Because assuming that they're actually even paying attention. I hate it when somebody says, oh, so how you doing? Wow, you know, you really got, they know nothing. They say, I don't, I don't watch the news. I don't read the newspaper. I don't want to know about it. Really? Right. I mean, they're not paying attention. So my question to you is, do voters really even care to understand why democracy is important? And what a question it is. You know, I think of myself, Michael, I really do as like an educator in my little area where I can talk about law and how things work. But, you know, I come up against this all the time. It's the most important issue there is. I extolled the verdict in New York uh, when others said, um, well, it can be uh, overruled by the voters. And of course it could, but it it meant a lot that the rule of law had triumphed in its own way. Everything I, I'll, I'll just say this, everything I observe and learn from people I really respect uh, and who know this sort of politics better than I is bad news. Just about every, it's just a stunning to me how again and again and again and again, and we're talking from Access Hollywood through January 6th, and now he's got a blueprint right out there saying, I'm going to make this country Turkey or worse. How it's even a a possible toss up of an election just turns my stomach. And I've I've heard some encouraging things that if you really analyze it to the few swing voters that the democracy could matter to them. But the fact that at a minimum half the country is indifferent about it, you know, I I, I feel like what you know are we like crazy elitists or something? This is. The American experiment. This is everything. It's so plainly on the line. And the answer to your question is, you know, I'm no expert, but as best I can tell, people do not care a lot. And it's deeply discouraging about, you know, at the end of the day, we're not going to have other trials. Who knows what will happen? It really will come down to the American people. And if they give us all President Trump, 
you know, at the end of the day, we're all, it's, we're on, all in trouble. it's on a perverse way. But it's I, the, the fact that this is in play now is mind boggling to me every day. It really is. So then let me ask you this as a final question, because the hour goes by quickly here on May. It does, yeah. If you had to isolate one message that the Biden campaign should be repeating over and over and over again, what would it be? So it would be exactly this, you know, the, the, uh, put everything else aside. This, this, you know, I mean, truth, justice, liberty and the American way truly, truly are on the ballot. But, you know, they think about this and they also are banging their head against the wall because it only does so much. And some of them are being urged by pundits to economy. And I mean, even that, right, they have such good news on it, but people just believe somehow that, oh, Trump is better for the economy and jobs will be better with him, et cetera. So, you know, basically that to me is the message, but they they know, you know, better. And they're, I think, frustrated with just this question. It does seem to me as an outsider that they are vacillating a bit and aren't exactly sure they've gone back and forth. And even, you know, with after the trial, et cetera. I mean, there's a fucking convict who's running for president. When when Spiro Agnew was convicted of a felony, it was clear he had to leave the vice presidency's office. But it but, you know, here we go with with Trump. So I think as you and I are doing and and at least half the country is doing, they are also metaphorically banging their head against the wall saying, you know, what what will work here? But they're doing it in very pragmatic ways. They're, you know, they're smart and they have to have to play it smart. And so that seems to mean messages other than this. But to me, everything pales next to these broad stakes that are really, 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 truly uh, on the ballot. Yeah. Well, thank you, Harry. Appreciate Thank you, you Mike. Appreciate. Oh, Way to go, I, you giant killer. Listen, look, yeah. I, I told everybody that yeah. this is going to be the yeah. one and only case that goes on before the election. That, yeah. you know, and, you know, they all laughed at me and they're like, oh, well, he's yeah. going to go middle. They, they, I can't tell you the number of people uh, on television who've gotten it wrong. You know, fortunately, yeah. When the reason why I asked you to join me today, because you actually got it right. So I thank yeah. you. I thank you for joining me as always. I thank you for making us and, smarter and for, um, you know, for helping us to spread the truth about democracy, women's rights, uh, and so on. Thank you so much, Michael. And just a very quick thing on that. You know, I'm as a prosecutor, I was never triumphant about convictions. The really important thing is that things worked after though there was a lot of pressure on them and and you know you were part of that i think it was a just result but the main thing is it the you know the rule of law worked in one little you saw that courtroom sort of dilapidated mm -hmm. old courtroom in manhattan things went as they were supposed to that was a good day well, there are other challenges but that was a good day. that's for sure See thanks you soon, i hope you got it pal bye bye bye